This ain't tennis. Woo! Ain't no match point. Hey, so lay your ball down, 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 down. <laughs>
yes. <laughs> like I said, I cannot say enough. It was so well done. And of course, I would be remiss if I did not give kudos to our main players here. Zendaya's career trajectory, I think we all know, has been wild. <laughs> you know, she got her start on Disney Channel, but let me make it very clear, no disrespect, but 90s to early 2000s Disney Channel and everything else that came after is a totally different situation. So nowhere near the same. So when she came out, you know, I wasn't familiar with her in that sense and she wasn't on my radar. While I do think that Zendaya has had pretty solid performances, especially in Euphoria, I think that was the one that was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I have to say that this is by far her best performance. And Tashi is a trip. <laughs> and I'm one of those people who appreciates characters that are unlikable. There's this thing about, you know, I can't get into unlikable characters. Well, I can't relate. Like, <laughs> give me the characters that are, you know, love to hate, frustrating, get on your nerves say the things that you think they're not supposed to say. And Tashi was definitely that. Tashi was willing to go to any lengths to make certain things happen. <laughs> and just seeing the progression of that character was wild, <laughs> to say the least. Now, as far as Josh O'Connor, I was already a huge fan of his. I was first introduced to him in the film God's Own Country several years ago. And seeing him go on to portray Prince Charles in The Crown, along with a multitude of other roles, I was already excited to see him as a part of this film. But his performance, wow. I have not seen him portray a character like this. And again, if we're talking about ruthlessness and a complicated character, he goes there. And I can definitely say the same thing about Mike Feist. His character has a different kind of dynamic than Josh O'Connor's, but I was already familiar with Mike Feist because of his role in West Side Story. So we have some talented people on board. And like I said, even with the youth piece, you know, having these younger characters, we do see this very unique progression of their stories and convergence of their stories and what that means for their lives. Now, as far as the cons... Not as many, but I have to say that some of the moments using slow-mo, which in theory I don't have an issue with, but there are times where slow-mo can just feel more like a stylistic choice and it's not really adding anything. And I would say for the most part it's fine, but there are moments where it kind of like feels like it's stretching things out a bit and it was just kind of like, all right, let's just, let's, let's get back on board. <laughs> like... Let's, let's kind of like come out of the slow-mo. Like it, there was never enough to where I was just frustrated. This wasn't like a Zack Snyder, sorry, <laughs> situation. Who this man? <laughs> but there were moments where I was kind of like, all right, let's, let's pull back, please. I also have to say that the sound was a little off for me. There were moments where the score and the general soundtrack, as enjoyable as it was, there were moments where it was almost drowning out dialogue and it was really hard to hear what the characters were saying. I'm assuming that's not just because I was in the Dolby Theater. I think, if anything, it kind of highlighted that more. I, I needed to hear what was going on and it was just like, it was too drowned out. And I just don't think it was the best choice for certain moments in the film. I also have to say that although Zendaya is at the very least a solid actress, I think she has moments where you can see that she has room to grow still. And I would have to say, my mom has said this as well, but I think with her range of facial expressions, there are times where I feel like she gets a little bit stuck. And when it comes to portraying like anger and intensity, she kind of does this scowl type thing and it's not as effective as other moments when she's kind of quiet, calm, reserved, cool. Like she's good at like playing it cool and, you know, being low key and laid back. But when it comes to like intense anger and intense emotion like that, there are times where it doesn't really work. And there were times here where it was just like, mm, it's not quite there for me. Lastly, I think that the ending is going to be a toss up for people. I wasn't mad at the ending. It was a little kind of like, eh, I guess, you know, like I, I admire the, the willingness to go for the ending and to make the choice that was made by the director. I wasn't mad at that in theory, 
But it was an interesting way to close out the story. I'm not 100% sure if it works fully, but yeah. So I'll just say I was a little divided on it. Still have to kind of see where I fall on that one. I would also say that since this film clocks in at about two hours and 10 minutes, it was a little long in the tooth. Not enough for me to squirm or feel restless, but I could kind of tell it was time to bring things to a close and it ran on for just a little bit longer than I expected it to. So I'm going to give Challengers an A minus. Like I said in my out of theater reaction, I am shocked. I did not have high expectations of this one. And, you know, as someone who appreciate sports but isn't a huge sports person. I felt like this did a great job interweaving the intensity of the sport with the intensity of these relationships and just understanding the ties that bind and the way the past and life shapes us in so many different ways and you know how the past can you know circle back around and completely affect the present. So I just thought that this had some depth to it that I was not you know, anticipating. I just figured this was going to be kind of straightforward, kind of, and and, uh, it gave me a whole lot more. I didn't know that I needed. So, yeah, I think Challengers might be a contender for one of my favorites of the year. I was invested. I was into it. And, uh, yeah, I am, I am, if nothing else, I am definitely excited to see what Luca Guadagnino has to say in the world of film because, He's made his mark already, but Challengers is definitely a bit of a departure, even for what he's done prior to now. So yeah, I am definitely here to see what he has coming up next. So once again, this is D Movie Man, signing off, and I'll see you with the movies.